Hello everyone, I am going to explain question number 2nd of exercise 7.6 from class 12. So in this question 2nd we have to prove Rolle's theorem uh, and in this video I am going to explain question number 2nd C part and D part. So we will start from the C part. C part is fx is equal to root x 1 minus bracket 1 minus x where x belongs to 0 to 1. And we have to satisfy the Rolle's theorem here. Now we will start because fx is not uh, any standard function, it is not a polynomial function either, it is not any standard function. That is why we have to prove all three conditions one by one. Directly we cannot write. So we, there are three conditions. First condition is the row, means first condition is the function should be continuous in the clause interval. So we will start by that. First condition of Rolle's theorem. Now, since uh, the given function is root x 1 minus x, and we have to prove that this function is continuous in this uh, clause interval. So, to prove it, we have to orally check that for all x which belongs between 0 to 1, if we 1 by 1 we have to substitute, is this function is defined or not defined. So, students, if we substitute from 0 to 1, it is well defined or really you can think in your mind and you can answer that it is defined. As well as for every value of x here which belongs in the clause interval between 0 to 1, you are going to get the unique value. You are not going, you are not going to get the same value for any two different values of x which belongs between 0 to 1. So, two conditions are there. Which two conditions? First condition is for every value of x which belongs between clause interval 0 to 1, the function should be defined. The second condition, at every value of x which belongs between 0 to 1, the function should have the unique answer. If any function is satisfying these two conditions, then we can say that the function is continuous in the clause interval. So, students, here is a C. Since given function fx is defined for each x belongs to 0 to 1 and for each n belongs to 0 to 1 fx have unique, here x will come, make here x, and for each x belongs to 0 to 1 fx have unique solution. So we wrote two conditions, first condition is it is well defined, second condition is it has the unique value. If any function is satisfying these two conditions then we can say that fx is continuous in the clause interval 0 to 1. So, first condition is satisfied. Now, we will move to the second condition. Second condition of Rolle's theorem is we have to prove that the function is differentiable in the open interval. Now, prove, to prove it, first write down fx, then differentiate it. First, to differentiate it, I wrote this root in the form of power so that I can use x to the power n formula as well as I opened bracket here. So, it is uh, just assume it will complete as x and n as 1 upon 2. So, x to the power n. So, what is the differentiation of x to the power n? That is n x n minus 1. So, when you will do here n is 1 upon 2, n minus 1 when you will do you will get here minus half. So, that minus half shifted here and this again I took x common and then according to the chain rule we have to differentiate x minus x square that will give you 1 minus 2x. I hope it is clear to you differentiation. Once again I am repeating, we will differentiate by assuming it as x to the power n, that is n x n minus 1. When you will do n minus 1 means you will get here negative half. So that negative half will shift to the down root x bracket 1 minus x and this bracket 1 minus 2x in numerator we obtain by differentiating x minus x square according to the chain rule. So f does x we obtain. Now we have to check whether the given function is differentiable in the open interval or not. For it again, we have to think in our mind that for each x belongs to the open interval 0 to 1, whether the given function is well defined or not. So, just uh, because it is open interval in that 0 and 1 are not included, so except 0 and 1, when you will substitute all the values here, you are going to get a defined function, it is not going to be infinity. And since it is well defined in the open interval 0 to 1, 
that's why the fx is differentiable in the open interval so i hope it's clear to you how we had proved we calculated first f dash x then we thought that for every x belongs to the open interval whether the given function is defined defined means it should not be infinity at any particular value of x which belongs in the open interval 0 to 1 now since we obtained that the second condition is also satisfying that's why we move to the third condition of ross theorem so third condition of ross theorem says that functions value at lower limit and functions value at upper limit should be equal so lower limit is 0 and upper limit is 1 so in function given function instead of x once we will substitute 0 and second time we will substitute 1 by substituting it we obtained that function at lower limit is also 0 and upper limit is also 0 since function value at lower limit and upper limit are same that's why f0 is equal to f1 now all three conditions of ross theorem is satisfied that's why there must exist c belongs in the open interval 0 to 1 such that f dash c equal to 0 so this is the conclusion of the ross theorem ross theorem says that if any function is satisfying three condition then there must exist a point c belongs in the open interval where f dash c equal to 0 so we have to set, now we have to solve this for that first we'll write down f dash x which we calculated before and instead of x we will replace it by c then we'll keep it equal to 0 and from here Uh, we are going to calculate the value of c which we will get as 0.5 and we have to check whether this 0.5 belongs in the open interval 0 to 1 so it's belonging hence the ross theorem is satisfied now we'll move to the part d of question number second here again we have to prove the ross theorem now since it's a cos s and you i think you know you might know the graph of cos s it's also the graph of cos x is also continuous that's why the cos function is continuous as well as differentiable for each real number so it implies the first condition of ross theorem that is fx is continuous in the closed interval 0 to pi and fx is differentiable in the open interval 0 to pi now we wrote here fx as cos 2x now we are moving to the third condition of ross theorem that is functions value at the lower limit 0 that will give cos 0 equal to 1 and functions value at upper limit that is pi that is cos 2 pi is again 1 Now, since uh, function value at lower limit and upper limit are same, that's why f0 is equal to f5. So all three conditions of Ross theorem satisfy. So there must exist f dash c0 where c belongs in the open interval 0 to 5. So for finding this, first we have to differentiate. So I wrote here f(x) is equal to 2 cos 2x, and then I calculated f dash x. To calculate it, we have to differentiate. So when we we'll differentiate cos 2x, that will give us minus sine 2x. But when, according to chain rule, we have to differentiate this 2x again. So when we we'll differentiate 2x, that will give us 2. So that is this 2. So this 2 I wrote from the chain rule. So the differentiation of cos 2x is minus 2 sine 2x. Now we'll keep this f dash x equal to 0. From here, when sine theta is 0, that time theta is n pi. N is integer now this 2 is in multiply so 2 will go in divide so we go here and upon 2 so since it n is the integer so we will start from positive 0 1 2 3 because our interval is positive 0 to positive 5 so don't take your negative numbers we'll start from 0 then i kept instead of n i am replacing the values first 0 then 1 then 2 then 3 so when you will substitute 0 it is going to be c equal to 0 now when you will substitute here 1 that will give you c is equal to pi upon 2 now when you will substitute 2 here it is going to be only pi now when you will substitute 3 it is going to be 3 pi upon 2 so it will go like this until infinity now among all these values we have to select the value of c which is satisfying the condition so students uh, here the value of c is pi upon 2 which belongs in the 0 to pi because uh, we have to select the favorable value of c which belongs in the open interval also so among all these values only pi upon 2 belongs in the open interval 0 to pi for which f dash c is equal to 0 hence ross theorem is applicable for given function means you can say that ross theorem is satisfied for the given function so i hope these questions uh, might be clear to you we had used the ross theorem concept 
again i am explaining rolle's theorem have mainly three conditions that the function should be uh, continuous in the closed interval function should be differentiable in the open interval and functions value at lower limit is must be equal to the functions value at the upper limit if any function is satisfying these three conditions then there exists a point which belongs in the required open interval where f dash c is equal to 0 so i hope it's clear to you and students if you have any suggestions or any um, problem you can write in the comment so that uh, we can improve and we can clear your doubts thank you